<coughs> so we're back to C2.5, salts and electrolysis with key stage four additional science and triple science for AQA specification. So we're looking at in this video the electrolysis of brine. This is absolutely quintessentially one of the most important things that the chemists have ever done for humanity. When people say chemistry is boring and it's not relevant to me, well, everybody uses these products all the time. And without all this happening, we'd have a very different life. So thank you to the chemists. Now, the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution produces hydrogen and chlorine. Sodium hydroxide solution is also produced. These are important reagents or chemicals for the chemical industry e.g. sodium hydroxide is used for the production of soap and chlorine for bleach and plastics. Now, syllabus item G would be to look at the reactions at electrodes and how they can be represented by half equations. For example, two chlorine minuses go to Cl2 plus two electrons or two chlorine minuses minus two E's goes to Cl2. So a little minus should be more on the top, so it's the charge on the electron. Now, Higher tier candidates should be able to complete and balance half equations for the reactions occurring at the electrodes during electrolysis. So be prepared. Now then, in the lab, it's a very simple experiment. So the electrolysis of brine is just about passing an electrical current through the brine and you get three products. You get chlorine gas at the anode. So let's look at this picture here. We've got a carbon electrode. Normally we tend to do it upside down so we've got an electrode, you might have a, um, a bung, or, um, maybe out of rubber or cork, a special little tank, and all you do is you put these little finger test tubes on top of the electrode. So we've got bubbling gas, chlorine gas formed at the anode, hydrogen gas is made at the cathode, so remember we've talked about that in terms of the reactivity series, and in the water, sodium chloride is slowly converted and we end up with sodium hydroxide, so sodium chloride solution, just salt, so it's literally water from the sea, from the ocean, goes to form hydrogen and chlorine gas and sodium hydroxide. That's really immensely useful. We've got to be really careful though to avoid inhaling that chlorine gas, so it is a very dangerous process. Secondly, the hydrogen gas is of course explosive. Now we can test for these gases with a litmus paper which should go bleach white and hydrogen gas should go squeaky pot. Now you may have done this um, experiment in class. Now if we look at the industrial comparison, that was our lab experiment. And here you can see, look, chlorine out, <coughs> hydrogen out, sodium chloride in, sodium hydroxide out. We basically use what's called a diaphragm cell. And it's a slightly porous membrane. And what it allows to happen is a high concentration of sodium chloride comes in, then some of it then passes through this membrane and it kind of keeps the idea that you've got the sodium chloride one side at a higher um, sort of concentration and then sodium hydroxide is constantly being pumped out so you can get a flow of chemicals in, chemical out, chemical out, chemical out. So in the exam you might be expected to label the diagram with, with a little bit of help maybe from the equation of what comes in and what goes out. Now here we look at the half equations again, like we said, so the half equations for what happens in the electrolysis of brine are at the positive electrode we've got two Cl minuses, so on this one it's here isn't it, and then this one is like your inverted version, you could do it in, a, in just a simple beaker and let the gases bubble off, but the problem is they, they sort of intermingle and get confused, so it's much easier to do it upside down, but you may see a picture like this, of course the chlorine gas is Cl2, but I've got to add in two electrons to balance it. And the negative electrode, remembering it's hydrogen, H plus, that comes off due to the reactivity series, and you have two electrons and it forms the hydrogen H2 gas. That leaves a solution containing Na plus and OH minus ions, which of course forms a sodium hydroxide, which is alkaline. Now, this is a very neat little chart that I found, and it looks at all of the different things we can make. So look, sodium chloride or salt can be used to make purifying petroleum and natural gas, and degreasing metals, and water and sewage treatment. We said about precipitation, didn't we, earlier on in the series. We used for paper, cellulose, artificial fibres, soaps, detergents, aluminium, titanium dioxide processes, salt, 
can go and be used in the manufacture of margarine because we've got hydrogen gas so we're making a vegetable oil and we're hydrolyzing it and we're changing it into a harder fat so we're changing the boiling point aren't we there's a course from hydrogen we can make hydrogen added to chlorine make hydrochloric acid for cleaning water treatment medicines food soy sauce gelatin products cosmetics synthetic rubber and precious metals you can do all sorts um, chlorine we use in water and sewage treatments in the manufacture of PVC textile solvents titanium dioxide so that's sun cream titanium dioxide pesticides drugs to treat heart disease leukemia and arthritis and sodium hydroxide and chlorine go together to make bleach which is used for treating water for swimming pools and used for household bleach there's a massive number aren't there of products there so in terms of as a process don't underestimate how important this is for our planet and our modern western way of life and that ends our video ends our video